Happy summer, Penn County. Father Brian O'Brien here. You have tuned in to another episode of Pastors of Pain. Uh, Father Kerry is out and about. He is a uh, wedding machine this summer, uh, doing many, many weddings, um, witnessing the vows of many, many people, OSU alums and students. And anyway, it's one of the most uh, wonderful and joyful things about about being a priest. Um, so without Father Kerry, I have brought in two very special guests. They have both been on the show before. They are returning guests, and they are seminarians of the Diocese of Tulsa, Kyle Dowd and Marcus Lyons. Yeah! Ooh, yeah! Oh, Marcus, yeah! Marcus! Love it, Marcus. love it, love it. So they, um, uh, Mark, I'm going I'm to let them talk here in just a minute, but Kyle and Marcus are here for the summer in Stillwater. Um, so they're living with uh, with me and Father Kerry and the priests that are coming uh, soon. So June, uh, June 30th, July 1st, Father Robert Healy's coming. Uh, he'll be my associate at St. Francis Xavier. Father James Porter's coming. He'll be Father Kerry's associate at St. John's. And then Marcus and Kyle are already here. Right. Okay, uh, so Kyle, let's start with you. Um, Hello. Uh, give us a little bit of uh, kind of where you are in. So two, I have two questions. Where okay. are you like in your seminary life? Kay. And then what are you doing in Stillwater this summer? Sure. Kyle. So um, I'm studying theology up in St. Louis um, for Tulsa. Um, for the Diocese of for Tulsa. For the Diocese of yep. Tulsa. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just finished like my first year of kind of a graduate master's program equivalent thing in studying theology. And I'm going to be back in Stillwater for the next year. Yes. Just hanging out Not just with summer. Father O'Brien and co. Um, and others. And others. Yeah. Just learning from them, serving the people of God and praying a lot. And yeah, that's kind of my learning Spanish. That's oh, kind of a big goal. KBN. KBN. There we go. Right. So what have you done? You've been here, Kyle, uh, a few days already. Mm -hmm. uh, what have you done? We had a spar sp Spanish parish mission. Yep. There we go. That's cool. Make sure I get my words in English. You guys right. sat through. I was proud. I was proud of you. You, you sat. What do you, Marcus, what do you think? How much? You, you sat through, I mean, multiple hour-long talks entirely, yeah. <laughs> entirely in Spanish. Of those hour-long talks, Marcus, like combined between the two of us, how much do you think we actually got? Maybe combined uh, 10%. Yeah. Okay, so there's some work. There's some work. There's some work to be done. There's some work to be done. So Kyle um, will be here this summer and then is also going to be with us all the way through May of 2023. That is correct. So we call it in the uh, in the priest world, we call it a pastoral year, kind of where you're mm -hmm. you're in in and around a parish. And I think especially for Kyle, because he's been on the show before, Kyle converted to Catholicism in college. And so you didn't like grow up in the in a parish, right? You didn't grow yeah. up sort of with the rhythm, the liturgical rhythm of a parish. Mm -hmm. What happened? So you've been in and around parishes, you know, like on Sundays, and you've been Christmas and Easter, but like not the, the day to day, the day to day, yeah. you know, is the kind of where the ordinary, you know, yeah, is where parish life, you know, mm -hmm. where where it happens. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. So the Kyle, life of Kyle will be in and around. You'll see him in and around Stillwater. Uh, uh, a lot for the next 11 months. Whoa. Okay, Marcus. Uh, Marcus Lyons. Marcus Lyons is uh, from Tulsa, seminary for the diocese. Tell us, where where are you? Where are you in seminary? What are you doing in Stillwater? Go. Hey, folks. I'm still Marcus Lyons. <laughs> it's good to be back. Unchanged back on the show. since my last visit. <laughs> so uh, I just finished my first year in St. Louis, so Kyle and I... Spent the year in the same place, but I was in a different part of the building. I was starting. I was studying philosophy this year, so I just finished my first year at the seminary. So it's the first section of our studies, philosophy, and then later I'll uh, do what Kyle is doing in theology. So you're like two years behind Kyle in like formation. Is that yeah, accurate? Okay. Yeah. So you would say you are, if someone said, what, like, what are you? You would say, I am, like, I just finished, what would we say for, like, first philosophy? First philosophy okay. is and probably Kyle the Kyle has just finished first theology. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. 
Very cool. Um, so we were talking about uh, how what we wanted to talk about on the show. So Father Carrie and I did a show last week on the sixth commandment. You can check that out in our series on the commandments. Uh, we have four more to go, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Those will be forthcoming at some point. We just sort of fit them in whenever we, well, really whenever we feel like it because it's our show. Um, so we were talking, uh, I was talking to Kyle and Marcus about all the cool things that they've learned in the seminary, which are many cool things. Um, tell us, like, give us an example of like a class that you take at the seminary, like that has a cool name. How about philosophical anthropology? Yes. Mm. Now we're talking. Okay. Help, help us understand what is, that is a lot of what, syllables. what is yeah, that? Lots of syllables. <laughs> what? It's a study of man from a philosophical perspective to boil it down. So, we we studied from a Thomistic Aristotelian perspective. Thomistic being Saint Thomas Aquinas. Saint Thomas Aquinas. Aristotelian Aquinas, being Aristotle. Aristotle. Yeah. And so we just look at what is we ask the question: What is a person? And we start breaking that down. So all year we talked about great things like gender, personhood, identity. So a lot of the biggest questions that we that all have continue to, and our, and our big questions in our culture today. Right. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Kyle, what was the most interesting class uh, that you took this year? Um, there were a lot of them. Um, I think I also had an anthropology class uh, this last semester, but on the theology side. So kind of taking kind of Christian anthropology. Yeah, yeah. So kind of taking as a starting point, the stuff that Marx is talking about, like what does reason tell us about man? But then adding to that, like what is what is the fact that God became man? What does that tell us about man? Ooh. Like theology. So like the incarnation. Yeah, yeah. A kind of general rule of thumb, like theology always proceeds from like what we got from revelation. So whether it's scripture or tradition, um, in tradition informed by scripture, um, the church's teachings, like that's, that's more of the jumping off point for theology. And of course they don't contradict. So like, um, yeah, we, wow. we talked a lot about, um, also in that class, we talked about sin and grace, Ooh. which was big. Yes. So the, the title like of the class was anthropology, I'm sin and grace. Pro grace. Yeah. All really great For stuff. For those of you scoring at home. <laughs> sin bad. Sin grace bad, good. grace good. That's yep. what I took away from that class. Do good, what I remember. avoid evil. Yes. The first rule of the moral law. Mm -hmm. Okay. So last weekend, uh, at our parish, we had some baptisms which was awesome. Um, when we baptize, so people, I mean, I think a lot of people listening maybe have recently been to a baptism, but they don't, most people don't like pay super close attention to kind of all the words of a baptism. But one of the things that we do after, so after the baby is baptized, we pour, we pour water, uh, or the, or the, or the person being baptized is like submerged and we baptize in the name of the Holy Trinity in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit. Then immediately after the baptism, there's an anointing that takes place. And we use sacred chrism, this beautiful, wonderful smelling oil. So if it's a baby uh, or, you know, or an adult, we, we anoint them on the top of their head. And, and part of the prayer that goes with that, I don't have my book with me, but we say to the person um, that you are anointed as a priest, prophet, and king. So we were talking about this the other day, and I think this is a worthy discussion that it is what we're saying, and these guys are going to explain it, is that every if you're baptized, then you're a priest. Is this true or false? A baptized person is a priest. True. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, that's what we... True? True. True. Yeah. True, yes. True. So are they a priest like I'm a priest? No. Okay, so tell us about that. I don't think so. So let so I mean I'm baptized. I hope so. So I, I am, yes. So okay, I'm good. A, I was baptized. When I was baptized, I became a priest. Yes. But then I was Part one. ordained a priest at the age of thirty one. Not really. And I became a priest again? A different kind of priest? Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about. Right, yes. Get, so let's dive in here, gents. What are we talking about? 
that somebody who's baptized is a priest. Dead air time. Okay, Crick, here we go. Crickets. Yeah, what do we got? <laughs> so I would I might define a priest basically as someone who consecrates to God, somebody who sets apart for God, someone who blesses. And so Father O'Brien, you're you're a priest in the ministerial sense. And so you the way I sometimes think about it is you show everybody how to offer the sacrifice and then they take they take the template and they apply it to their own life. So that's the task of the, the ministerial priest that is making the sacrifice common ministerial, for all Christians. Ministerial, so I'm like a, I'm a, I mean, I'm a minister. A minister, yeah. yeah. So a baptized person is not a ministerial, a ministerial priest. ministerial priest. Okay. Talk us through that. What's the what's the distinction? So the distinction is important, of course, because God has appointed certain men to be ministerial priests. You know, it's like why everyone is not the president. We have to have some sort of yeah, we hierarchy. Can't all be president, right? And so, so the leader shows his followers how to how to live, as as you were talking about last week. And so the, the ministerial priest, um, the two priests differ in essence, but not in degree. I think this is important, an important point. Help us understand that. Those are words that we don't typically right. use. So when you become a priest, it's not like you're getting promoted to a higher level of humanity. You know, the priest is not, he doesn't become a better guy. I'm a super, I'm not a superhuman. Right. It's a it's a different thing entirely. But the ministerial priest is appointed to serve the common priesthood. And so so there are two different things, but one is not necessarily set above the other. So a baptized person is not a ministerial priest like Father Carey no. and I. A common priest. So every baptized person is a priest. Yes? Yes. Yes. But different than like a priest you'd see on the altar on Sunday. Yes. Correct. Okay. Correct. All right. So we're getting we're Correct. getting there. This is yeah. good. This is good. good. Okay. Okay. So what is the common when you say the common priesthood, what does that what does that mean? So it's it's common in the sense that like we it's common in the sense that we all get it. Um, so it's also called like the universal priesthood, Ooh, okay. um, which universal, not meaning like there are priests all over the universe or whatever, but like we're all, uh, all of the baptized are part of this priesthood. And it has to do with the fact that when we're baptized, we're not just like it, it. Baptism isn't just like citizenship in the country of the Catholic church or something weird like that. Like baptism is being, we're, we're baptized into Christ, like into Jesus Christ. So we, one of the terms for Jesus Christ is the high priest from Hebrews, right? From the book of Hebrews. Um, so like he's, he's the, the big priest. I don't know how to, how else you would put that, but like he's the, the high, yeah, the high yeah, priest. He's of the, all the priests, he's, he's the, the priest, yeah. priestiest. Um, <laughs> I guess <laughs> we'll go with that. We'll go with, we'll that. Go with that. Yeah. Um, so like we look at what he's done. Um, and of course in every Catholic church, what should be like right up front and center, like the biggest thing um, visible is the cross, like the body of Jesus Christ on the cross to show us that like this was the moment in Jesus Christ's life, the life of God, the son on earth, where he showed his love in the most powerful way, um, where he sacrificed himself for the good of all of us. Um, and that's that's principally what like a priest is doing. Um is making making a sacrifice and thereby blessing the world. Blessing meaning like giving God's life, God, which is grace. That's that's one definition of grace. It's like the life of God, right? So the priest offers a sacrifice. In Jesus Christ's case, it's himself. Um, so he's both priest and victim. And then that like uh, then God's grace is given in exchange for that sacrifice, God's favor. Um, and so we, because we're baptized into Christ. We become like cells in Christ's body or like parts of Christ's Ooh, body. Okay, that's helpful. Yeah. So that's how when we like that, that's how in baptism we're given a part in Christ's um, 
So we're sharing, you would say, would we say we're sharing in his priesthood? Yes. And then a ministerial priest. So it's not like there's Christ's priesthood and then Kyle's and Marcus's. Right. And and they're all sort of equal. Yeah. And then I'm, you are Marcus Lyons, baptized Christian, is sharing in the priesthood of Christ by his baptism. So it's not his own, your own thing. Right. Sharing in the priesthood of the one high priest. Correct. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah. This is good. This is good. What else can you tell us? This is very interesting. St. Paul also says something about this in his, what is it, Marcus, his letter to the Colossians? Ooh, Colossians. You read Colossians 1, 24. Tell us. So I think this is an important verse uh, because St. Paul is talking about his own sufferings in ministry. Uh, and he says, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church. So that's kind of Explain a that mysterious, what is lacking? Yeah, what's lacking in Christ, you'd think like, no, oh, he's not. Right, he's, he's God. He's he, God. He's the second person of the Blessed Trinity. There's nothing what lacking. What could be lacking? But yeah. he himself says, I mean, or Paul is writing, that right. something is lacking in Christ. Mm. And so that's, yeah, that's a big that's something to unpack because, uh, you know, we know that Christ did not come and do something imperfect. Yeah, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to halfway save right. the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll do the rest later. But, in fact, I think what Paul is saying and, and what St. Augustine says about this is that as cells in the body of Christ, like Kyle was saying— We are suffering with him when we unite our own lives to to this project of salvation. And so it adds to the glory of God when people freely choose to enter into Christ's priesthood. In like, so in biologically, if you have cells that like are like, I'm out, I don't want to. Yeah, that doesn't work. I don't want to be. I'm not going to be a cell anymore. It's it hurts of, the body. Right. Mm, it hurts yeah. the body. But when a cell is healthy and kicking on all four cylinders, on all mitochondria, cells whatever, have cylinders? I don't know. Uh, then the, bo- the body is healthier. Right? Yeah. That's yeah. very true. And so the same, is that what we're saying? That's, I mean, this is all analogies fall short at some level, but right. I like that. That's a good analogy that we are cells in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. And by bap- by baptism, we become a cell. Yeah. Is that what so we're by saying? by baptism, one of the effects of baptism is that we get a new nature. So maybe a way of thinking about it with cells is Ooh. like if one of the human cells just decided that it didn't want to be a human cell anymore and just said like I want to be I don't know a dog cell that would you know that would kind of hurt right? Obviously, cells can't do that, but we have free will as human beings. We could. So we can we can like that's what happens when we sin is we're deciding that I don't want to do something that's good for my nature anymore, right? So in baptism, when we ah. receive the new nature, this super nature of Christ, we're taking on his nature and his, part of who he is is priest, right? As son, he's giving himself back to the Father um as an offering. Um and that takes place in his humanity because he takes that on in the incarnation. Um, But yeah, I love what Marcus said about like offering up our daily lives. Um, Cause yeah, sometimes we like, we can tend to go to mass and maybe on Sundays uh, we go to church on Sundays and then just like, we don't know how to like, where, where does that go for the rest of the week? Like, what do we do? I mean, yeah, maybe we go to mass more than once a day or more than once a, uh, a week. Mm -hmm. Like, um, but even then, like how does, does that affect the rest of our lives? There's kind of this question Um, and part of what it means to be a baptismal priest is that all throughout the day, you're actually like sanctifying the world. So this is a big, if you want to learn more about that, the patron saint of Opus Dei, uh, is this organization. I knew you guys were going to work in. (laughs) We're on a big Opus Dei kick recently. Saint Jose Maria Escrivá. Yeah. Jose Maria Escrivá is a Spanish saint. Really cool. He, um, it's re- he's really good. If you have the a bomb. Se- com. The bomb. Is that right? <laughs> That's how he described <laughs> That's himself. His, yeah. yeah. 
he really in his is. diary. A, so he had this whole. So the, he founded a group called Opus Dei, yeah, which means the work of God. Mm-hmm. Um, and his whole thing was like the work of God is constantly going on in the world. Like we're we're the, like he emphasized like especially the laity. So he was a priest, but he was reaching. He was reaching a ministerial out, priest. Yes, a ministerial priest reaching out to us, like me, me and Marcus, the laity here. Um, and encouraging us, like in our daily lives, whatever our occupation might be, um, to sanctify the world by just like following Christ and doing good wherever you are, wherever we are, whatever you're doing, do it for the love of God and His people. Yes, that's part of what it means to be a if baptismal priest. You are mopping priest. a floor. You mop, and I think he, I think he, either he wrote this or one of his kind of early followers, like mop, you're sw- like sweeping the floor. This might have been Saint Therese too. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Anyway, you're mopping the floor. Mop the floor as if, like, Christ is going to walk on that floor. Yes. Like, glorify God in mopping. Mm -hmm. But how often are we like, I can't wait to, you know, but like sanctifying. So that's what, so that's what priests do. Um, Priests offer sacrifice. So as, as a ministerial priest, as we've talked about, what, what do I do? I offer, I offer the sacrifice of the mass Mm -hmm. every day. Now you guys can't do that. Um, no, that yeah, that would be that would be weird. Much, much as I would like, that would be I weird cannot. and bad. Now someday, someday, God willing, you might. But as a as a in the common priesthood, you're still called to offer a sacrifice because that's what priests do. Is that what we're saying? Yes. So there's Old Testament. Is there an Old Testament connection? Like, what's the like? Is this is this something Jesus sort of made up the priesthood? Is there a, what's the sort of a leading question, but yeah. what's so, the, yeah, I mean, the, the there's Jewish roots, the here. New Testament idea of priesthood is very much based in the Old Testament idea of priesthood. You know, as we know, Jesus was a Jew. He was part of the uh, institutional religious life at, at the time. And there were priests offering blood sacrifices in the temple, animals, um, and, you know, once a year the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies and sprinkle blood on the ark. So what he does resembles very much an Old Testament temple sacrifice. And in a lot of ways, the, the purpose of those was atonement. Atonement means Atonement what? for sins, like making up for a wrong. There we go. So that's what Jesus is doing. So if you had sinned, you would come to the temple with a, a live animal. And it'd be like your best. Yeah. Hopefully. One. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, best cow. I mean, we talk about like in sacrifice, you know, like a, a, a Christ is like an unblemished lamb, like not a, and so you yes. come and you get, and you, you would take that animal, let's say a, a chicken or an ox or whatever. You bring that to the temple and then you give it to, to the priest to the temple priest who would then sacrifice it on your behalf on your behalf yeah right so lots of parallels there to to the celebration of the mass mm-hmm. now so i think a lot of times you know you see kind of christian churches that are um and i'm not you know i'm not going after anybody but like it, it's 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 a it's worship you know we're we're praising god and and which is good and and holy and wonderful mm-hmm. but like there's no sacrifice yeah, and I think there's like where where's the line from like the the Jewish roots of 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 the Old Testament and Jesus to ch- like church where it's just all about praise yeah. and no sacrifice. I mean, actions speak louder than words, right? So like if we if we were to take all of our words about God, like all of our praise of Him, we we like if we were to do that for just an hour, that would be really great. Um, but at the end, we'd be like, there's still something that we like, we've left undone. Yep. And even if we took that even further, even if we spent an hour, not just like talking about God being great, but doing acts of service, which is a better way of praising God, um, that would still be great, but there'd still be something left over. There's like some kind of praise, some kind of worship sacrifice to God. That's like, that's got to fulfill all of that. And that's the sacrifice of Christ on the cross which the ministerial priest, um, God has ordained to like, to bring that, make that present to us here, not to do it again or anything, but just to make it present here now in this place, in this time 
2022, right? It's still 2022. I don't still, know. Still, still is. Halfway. Okay. Oh man, it just keeps going so on. So we're in the mass. Yeah, we're making the sacrifice of Christ at Calvary present. Yes. Once again. And all of the prayers and joys and sufferings and stuff that we are in our baptismal priesthood offering up every day, all 900 households of St. Francis Ooh. Xavier in Stillwater. Yeah. Um, all of that gets brought together and collected at mass in, uh, in the priest's prayers. So like one of the early prayers at mass, um, right towards the beginning is called like the technical term for it is the collect. It's usually the part like commonly referred to as the opening prayer or opening prayer, the one at the beginning where the priest says, let us pray. And then there's a pause while the server gets the book and then he opens his hands and says, Oh God, Something, something, something through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, that's like collecting or collecting in English uh, yep. all of our prayers from the people down there into one thing, uh, which ultimately happens like at the offertory where you like bring the bread, you bring the wine, yeah, the symbolizes yep. symbolizes our gifts, yep. all of that stuff. We give it to God and he blesses it. He turns it into Jesus, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So there's, so I think when we talk about like the common priesthood, it has a lot to do with how we worship and how we, when we come to mass. So the idea that when you go to mass, you're not, you are not a passive spectator. Um, oh, what's the priest doing up there now? Oh, oh, that looks neat. You, you have, you, you are bringing with you your, yourself, your, your sacrifices, right? You've got some skin in the game. You got some skin in the game. Yeah, yeah no, that's great. That's great. So that's one way, and our, just in our last few minutes here, what's, uh, that's one way of living out the, this common priesthood. Because I think most people, a lot of people would say, like, you're not, I don't, I don't know. So I'm, I'm a priest, but I don't know, what, like, big deal. What do I, how does that affect my life? So in our last few minutes, what would, what would you say to that? Okay, I'm, I am a baptized Christian. Therefore, I am priest, prophet, and king. We can get to the prophet and king maybe down, down the road. Sure. But for now, I'm, I'm a priest. So what? So I think the common priesthood mirrors the ministerial priesthood in a lot of ways. And one that Kyle and I were thinking, were speaking about earlier was we, we have the power to forgive in a special way as Christians. You know, we can't forgive sins, but we can forgive other people. And that's, that, that's got a special power to it. That's a very priestly act. Yeah, it's a priestly act because it involves putting putting behind yourself something that maybe actually hurt you or damaged you and you have to offer that to God. So in forgiving, we are living out our priesthood. Yeah. Wow. And there are many, many other ways, you know, anytime. What is, yeah, what are some other ways? How can I, how else can I live out my priesthood? I think like a kind of preemptive forgiveness maybe is like thinking the best of the people around us or like assuming the best of them. Um, obviously not in a way that like, uh, you know, avoids or ignores the obvious, you know, but like, I guess without like a coworkers or a family, like just assuming the best intentions whenever they do something, uh, maybe it's something that like drives us the wrong way. Um, Yeah, I don't know, like some example, like, oh, he left his dishes in the sink again. That darn seminarian, like, oh, well, I'm sure he was in a hurry. I'm sure he was just, you know. Yeah, ascribing good motives. Yeah, Yeah, ascribing good motives. That's a priestly thing? It is, yeah, yeah, because we're preemptively forgiving them for, like, some sort of wrong, you know. So this apply. I don't know, how does a kid live it out? What what is, like, a a baptized 10-year-old? How are they living it out? I would say like obedience to parents um, and Ooh, just like a general. Obedience. Yeah, yeah. That's a part of the hard, priesthood. But it is it's certainly a we part of the priesthood. We take a promise. I mean, a ministerial priesthood, we, we take a promise of yeah. obedience to our bishop and his successors. Mm-hmm. And a beautiful thing about children is purity, um, just like an innocence of heart, innocence of mind. Um, so safeguarding that in whatever way, like in conversations with friends um, and media we consume and stuff, kind of like last week. Um yeah, purity of heart and obedience, I think, for kids is really good. Dang. We could, man, I, we could talk about this all day. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately. We, are out of, unfortunately we are out of time. 
Our 29 and a half minute show has come to a close. Um, okay, Kyle and Marcus, uh, thanks for, for joining us here on Pastors of Pain. Great to be here. They'll be around all summer, so I hope you see them. You can invite them to dinner. They eat food all the time. We certainly do. Um, they clean up after themselves. They're wonderful. Okay, uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. God bless you.